hey what's up guys and welcome back to anime king 2 and today i'm going to be giving you part 48 of what if aizuna uchiha was naruto ancestor remember to get this one to 100 like as usual share this to all of your friends on your social media platform and also go ahead and check out the brand new episode of what if naruto got banished and got a supernatural ability and enjoy that guys and over on anime king i post a new episode of what if Naruto was the Osusuke king. So go ahead and enjoy it as well guys. And I also post a new episode of what if Naruto is a badass genius. So go ahead and check out that as well guys. And remember if you're new and this is the first time you hear my voice. And you enjoy the videos on both anime making and anime making too. Go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the anime making family. And thank you for all of your help and support. And remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new. I'll be replying talking about to all of you. So without further ado let's begin this new episode. Start the intro. <laughs> so, the last time we left off, Naruto took on Tobirama, Oshirama, and Orochimaru as all of them attacked him at once as he was alone taking all of them as the group was tremendously powerful as Tobirama chopped Naruto in a midnight spear as Naruto couldn't see anything but darkness but Naruto started to release bombs after bombs inside the place to disrupt the chakra flow to break out of it as Tobirama was never expecting Naruto to be so fast and intelligent, as Naruto burst out of his jutsu, as Naruto took away Tobirama's soul, sealing his body away, Oshirama seeing that turned towards Naruto as it was time for them to get down to it, as an immense chakra emerged from Oshirama, as Orochimaru stepped forward as well, as he was now in his hydra snake form with numerous heads as he was on top of it, as Naruto erupted as his son of form with the nine tail fox. Each of the tails had nine deadly dragon face on the end of it. As Naruto grabbed onto Orochimaru, using his wooden technique and stabbing wood spikes all over him as he incinerated Orochimaru with a blast from the nine tails. As Naruto turned towards Hoshirama as the both of them started to battle, as Hoshirama created a wooden golem, as the both of them started to fight it out, as an incredible battle tear through the entire area, the both of them released tremendous attack on each other, rippling a huge explosion that exploded the barrier. Hoshirama created a numerous amount of both clones, as he created a four ceiling barrier around them, as no more people need to die because of their conflict. As the battle went on for a long while, as Naruto was getting weak as his chakra was running out, but Kurama pumped more chakra into his system as Naruto stood proud as Hoshirama slammed his hands together and created a monstrous statue with numerous of arms as Naruto refilled his Susano back together all of the patches of the broken parts coming back together as it let out a devastated roar as Naruto and Hoshirama leaped at each other as Hoshirama drive a wooden spear through Naruto's stomach as Naruto drive the blade right through Hoshirama as he sealed away Hoshirama's soul as the monstrous wood technique and the Susano faded down to the ground as Naruto collapsed on the ground as Krama told him he could rest for a while he won so yeah guys that was basically last where we left off you guys can switch across the place and check it out for yourself so what do you say we begin this new episode Itachi was looking at Sasuke the both of them breathing quite heavily after the both of them went at it as Itachi looked down at his little brother this is it little brother he said as a strange bone substance sort of form around him it then gained an orange red color as it gained armor and a giant shield as armor appeared around it this is it my little brother my strongest weapon my final susano said itachi then allow me to show you something the emperor taught me sasuke said as sasuke was standing on top of a snake called aoba as the snake started gain a demonic feature and suddenly bones start to form around Sasuke as well as the Susano merge with the snake form giving it a monstrous structure a bow was resting in one of his hands while the other held a chakra shield the combined image made Sasuke and his summon look like a mermaid to their unusual shape but Itachi know that their power had increased greatly let's end this Itachi Sasuke said 
his voice sounding harsh and panting. Itachi nodded as sweat was running down his face. Unlike the Ember who had unlimited chakra reserves, they were soon coming at their limits. And Sasuke was already on a mission before he met Itachi. And Itachi is the only reason for getting this tired. So beat, Itachi said. The two brothers then dashed forward as a snake lower half wrapped around Itachi's Susanoo defense. As Itachi brought down the shield, but it was blocked by Sasuke's smaller shield. Sasuke gritted his teeth when he was pushed back. As he applied more chalk and he pushed his brother. Itachi slammed his sword on the Susanoo covered snake as it instantly started to absorb the chakra. Sasuke sama, this is the sword of Tatsuka. Aoba said in horror. What? Yes, Sasuke. It can seal anything, even summon creatures into an endless genjutsu. Every summoning creatures has received warnings about such divine weapons. Sasuke clenched his fist as Itachi's sword that was about to touch Aoba. As that part got completely covered by Susano bones. This is not over, Itachi, Sasuke said as he raised the arrow in the ear. Blaze release. Susano kits at Sasuke, said Sasuke. As Sasuke launched several arrows, all of them covered in black flames, one after another. Itachi raised his shield as he blocked the attack, but Sasuke used a chance to push his brother back further and further. Itachi looked at his divine sword to see that he was not making much progress, as Sasuke was constantly pumping chakra towards Aoba lower half, and the snake provided the force to push Itachi, Susano back, a good tag team. His eyes glanced at Sasuke who was attacking him bravely, but Itachi saw the sweat on his brother's face, along with the blood that he vomited from his mouth occasionally. To stand up against my Susano and Tatsuka blade, little brother, you have truly, Itachi said, as his eyes started to tear up. In that moment, he had a realization. Seeing Sasuke fighting so hard had shown him that his brother finally became a man of his own. He had a goal, a life free from the destructive desires of vengeance. He had people who actually cared about him, and he was soon to become a father. No longer was he a little boy who needed his protection and guidance. Thank you, Naruto. You saved my brother. Made him the hero I always wanted him to be, Itachi thought peacefully. It also meant that Sasuke was his equal now and not going all out would be an insult to his brother. Both of them were warriors who were fighting for different sides. The better one has to win even if it meant the other's death. Sasuke was shocked when Itachi slammed into his Susanoo with a violent slam. Prepare yourself Sasuke, Itachi said gravely. Several black reddish balls started to form on Itachi Susanoo and the same thing was happening to Sasuke Susanoo. Yasuke no, make a temp, Itachi said. Yasuke no, make a temp, Sasuke said as they fire off their techniques as massive explosions went off as the techniques smashed into each other. Violent explosions rocked the entire forest. It was like the gods were raining down hammer on the earth as the fire blazed across the landscape. Neither fighter break down as they pour every amount of power they had into the final battle. At the end of it, the both of them were panting harshly blood and sweat oozing from their bodies. Their Susano had reduced in size and shape because of them getting tired. Even so, the brothers had satisfied smile on their faces. Time seemed to stop for the both of them. As both of them focused on each other, eyes ready. Itachi! Sasuke! The both of them yell as they charged at each other. As Itachi blade burned brighter than ever as he pointed forward towards his brother. Sasuke fires several arrows from his bow that strike several parts of Itachi armor. And then with a loud roar, bang, silence, there was no sound across the forest, the winds had even stopped, as Itachi had tears streaming down his face, his eyes fixed on his holy sword that ran right through Sasuke Susano and pierced through his brother's heart and Aoba brain. Sasuke's eyes were wide, blood leaking from his mouth as he stared at Itachi. I am sorry Sasuke, said Itachi tearfully. So am I, Itachi said. Slash, Itachi gasped out, a sharp sword tear right through his gut. Only Aoba remained as the Sasuke in front of him just vanished into nothingness. As one of Sasuke, Mangita Sharingan closed forever. Izanagi, said Itachi with a smile. The Susanoo vanished as both brothers fell to the ground. As Sasuke caught his brother to save him from further injury, gently he dragged Itachi's wounded form under the shade of a tree. At that moment, Itachi Mangita spotted something that broke his heart. Sasuke, you, he said in a numb voice. I finally surpass you, said Sasuke. You never want to kill me, said Itachi. I told you before that since Nerd had no judgment or interest in you, I am the only one who can bring judgment for your crimes. 
You have suffered enough. Your suffering is over now, Sasuke said. As he coughed up blood, Sasuke Itachi said. As Itachi Sharingan faded away, as he saw, Sasuke's heart beat. It was decreasing. This was not supposed to happen, said Itachi. Sasuke chuckled slightly, yeah. You were going to pretend to be all I am mighty and then die at my hands at the end. Not this time, Itachi. For the first time in my life, I am at peace. You didn't have to destroy your body for that. I would have gladly died for you. Itachi yelled. But I don't want that. I have also killed many people. Some of them innocent. My hands are stained with blood as well, just like you. If you had allowed me to win, not only would I be ashamed of myself and my powers for the rest of my life, but I would have to live with the regret that I killed my beloved brother after all the suffering you went through your entire life. And now you will let me go through the same regret Itachi asked. Sasuke shook his head. This is my choice, not yours. There is nothing you can do for me now but, if you truly felt something for me, then fulfill two wishes for me. Surrender to the Emperor, give him every information you have on the Akasuke and the resistance. And show him this, Sasuke said as he pulled out a scroll. He wrote something on it that should pardon your crimes. Why? said Itachi. As Sasuke looked up into the sky, Naruto taught me that life is too short for revenge. Besides, mother would have wanted this too, Sasuke said. Itachi resolved broke for the first time in a decade. He cried while sitting beside Sasuke. His brother breathing was becoming slow and slower with every passing moment. Yet still, he smiled and looked up into the sky. A wise man once told me that it is good for you to have someone to trust your child with upon your death. Sasuke, Itachi said, look after my child, Itachi. If there is any punishment for you, that should do it. Besides, I would be a terrible father. I, I'm not asking your opinion, Sasuke said. Get that through your thick skull, he said, as he was panting heavily. Itachi then sent something, Sasuke. I sense people coming this way. They're coming from the ear, the bird signature. But Sasuke was already slumped down. His breathing seemed like it wasn't even there. Even after Itachi trying to help his dying brother, his breathing was already drifting away. As Sasuke's vision was completely dark, he could barely hear Itachi calling his name. It's silly, but maybe things are alright now. But still, for those people I love and respected, I pray they die a more grateful death, he said. As the face of Naruto, Sakura, Kakashi, Kurenai, Haku, Anko, Hinata, Sanade, Gara, all of them came in front of him. As Itachi's tears dried up, as he just looked down at his brother, Sasuke had destroyed his body from the inside in order to win the battle. He was never planning on killing him. His pride had led to his downfall. As Itachi supported Sasuke leaning him closely. Without medical help, he will die soon as well. But that didn't matter to him. His brother was slowly fading away. Naruto, Sakura, long live the Reich, said Sasuke. As Sasuke but then slumped over, as Itachi checked his pulse. Sasuke, he said, tearfully. But Sasuke didn't answer, and he didn't feel anything. Commander Sasuke Itachi said, trying to wake him up with force, but nothing. After a few minutes of silence, Itachi gave a salute to his fallen brother. Meanwhile, Naruto opened his eyes, as the first thing he saw was a blinding light he tried to get up, but he felt an incredible pain in his chest, as he then heard footsteps rushing towards him. Soon enough, someone leaned over him. Kurenai, he said. A look of relief spread across her face as she wiped a few tears from her eyes. As he was hoping for her to curse at him for almost getting himself killed, but soft lips met his. As she breathed the kiss, as Nerta had a smug look on his face, I could definitely get used to this, he said. As she knocked him on the head softly, making him wince a little. And here I thought I'd get a grand reception, Nerta said. Damn woman, he said silently. I heard that, she said. Crap. She gave him her best murderous glare, and for the first time he looked down at his body. His entire chest was wrapped up in bandages, his left arm tied up in a sling, it was broken. Half of his face burned with scratch and cuts. There was a deep, painful sensation inside his chest. How bad, he asked. A nurse who was standing in the corner just watched as Nerd get scolded like a little child. Even the almighty Kaiser could get scolded. Alright, jeez, Nerd said. If I knew it would end up like this, I would prefer dying and enjoy my itchy itchy books in the afterlife, he said. As he didn't receive a response as he looked up to see Kurenai in tears. Don't ever say something like that again. Sorry, he said. 
So, how long was I out? One day. What? Your heartbeat is fine and stable, she said. Thank God for that. You seem to be in a good condition as well. Are the enemies defeated the axe? Yes. The capital is secure now, said Kurnai honestly. But there was something strange in her eyes that she was not telling him. Um, where's Fako, he said. Not that I'm not happy to see you here, he said. As he didn't know if they slept their coal war on. She's in the hospital. What? Nurka said. Fako is safe and healthy. So is Yang. And stop screaming, she said to him. That's good, Nurka said in relief. Naruto is Orochimaru truly dead. I don't doubt Uncle testimony, but the bastard always sneak away in the past, Kurnai said. He's dead, I obliterate him to the last cell in his body. Making her flinch, he could be quite scary at times. I'm glad to hear that, Kurnai said truthfully. As Naruto became silent, how many die, he asked. As Kurnai hesitated, she had wanted to keep this away from him for a while, well until his wounds heal. But he gave her a stern glare, which she had to submit to. While you battled with Orochimaru and his army, the Akaske attacked the capital. They were led by a masked man, she said. As she realized he wasn't shocked, you knew they would do so, she asked. It was going to happen sooner or later, Nurta said. I already revealed to you that I work with that organization, and we had captured the tail beasts. Yes, you made a deal with the devil, she said, as Nurta looked away. They were the only one with the resources that stored the tail beasts. They provided me with weapon, money, and manpower. My Reich was young and growing constantly at war with the entire shinobi world. If either one of the few nations knew the location of the tail beast, I would have to divide my sources to go and protect them. And if I had done that back then, the Reich would have collapsed, he said. Kurna wanted to say more but she couldn't. She herself was Hokage and she had to make a lot of hard decisions back then. They killed a lot of our people, Naruto, she said. Tell me everything, he said. He attacked that masked man with a small infiltration team. They were after something specific, something you entrust the sound for to protect. As she was curious and confused, did they get what they came for in her to ask? The entire royal guard led by the sound for fought against them, except for a critically wounded Teiwaya. None of them survived. Nurta closed his eyes as his fist dug deep inside his palms. It took him a few minutes to regain his composure, but he did. Go on, Nurta said. Gorin and Kimmar sacrificed their life to stop the invaders. Nearly a hundred Reich soldiers also died in battle. We are still counting the casualties. Your fight is over, everyone Nerda said. As Kurnai watched as he made a silent prayer for his deceased soldiers, the warriors who followed him to the end and made a sacrifice for the Reich. What were they protecting, Naruto? asked Kurnai. The Zero Tails and a boy called Sora that contained some of the Kayubi's chakra, Nerda confessed. What? Kurnai said. She was shocked about hearing that she heard rumors about the Zero Tails, but to hear that the creature existed in reality and was in the Akaski hands, and someone other than Naruto having the Kayubi power? As Naruto Sain explained how he and Sasuke captured the Zero Tail a few years ago, and Sora becoming part of their right once a fire nation was conquered, he also explained how Sora's father was there on the night when the Kayubi attacked and captured some of the beast's chakra and sealed it inside his son. For his own selfish reasons, as Kurnai had dropped to hear how oh, brutal the past was, sealing that thing, that amount of power inside of your own child for selfish reasons that was just despicable. You're right Naruto, the ninja world has to come to an end for a father to turn a blind eye and do such a atrocity on his own son for what she said in disbelief. Every person has darkness within them, it depends on how far they fall into the endless abyss. Nurka then started to get up from his bed as she tried to stop him but he raised a hand as he got back to his feet and stepped towards the window of the room. As his eyes looked at the afternoon sun shining in the sky, as people going around trying to restart their life, as his eyes were fixed on several bodies of people that were being moved away from the capital. Thank you for saving me, Nurka said. Order uncle to prepare our forces. I shall march to the battlefield in a few hours, he said. But you can't do that, she said. Why? I heal the lethal wounds on your body, and the other ones seem to be healing as well. But it does not change that the part of your heart that connects your lungs has been damaged and that need more time to be healed. I just managed to freeze the wound, but you need a critical surgery and you need to rest for at least 5 more days. If you don't do that, it could be harmful. But Naruto turned towards her with a smile. I don't like surgeries or resting in the hospital, Kurnai. You know that. This is not a matter of like or dislike. It concerns your life, she said. 
No, it is a more important matter than simple like or dislike. Believe it or not, victory in this war depends on how well I lead my people and help them defeat the enemy who clearly outnumbers our forces. I'm their best bet. Lying around in the hospital doesn't suit me after all. Colonel I stared at him. The glow on his face was shining brighter than ever. Besides, I don't trust anyone other than Snadi or Sakura to perform such a surgery on me. Since both of them are on the front lines, it is imperative that you take me there as fast as possible. That is if you want to save my life, he said. You're evil, you know that, she said. At your least a heavy sigh. I don't like this any more than you, Kurnai. But my life isn't mine. When I decide to conquer the world, I also took the responsibility to protect those under my reign. My soldiers are facing the enemies, twice, larger than their size. And the Akaski will join the war soon enough, again. I can't leave my subordinates to face, such thing alone. Will you support me, because not even I can do such thing on my own? As Kurnai just looked at him. I will, main emperor, she said. You don't have to necessarily call me that, Naruto said. I'll have to think about it, she said. Naruto, you really need that surge and medical rest. That battle with Hoshirama was, Kurama said. As you remember how scary it was. Even so, Naruto defeated the strongest shinobi alive. Strongest shinobi of all time. But he didn't came out of it unscathed. Help out as you can, Naruto said. My people need me. Very well, but the pain will be severe. And it will only get worse. I suggest you manage your expressions as best as you can, Grandma said. I will, Nerta said. Grandma seemed to watch as Nerta talked to Kurnai for half an hour as she explained what is going on out there, the entire forces, where everything is set up. After hearing about the problems, Nerta directed her with various solutions and orders. Unknown to her, he was suffering an unending pain, but he kept his face neutral and never showed it to her, as he was fighting as brave as he could, because he couldn't lose, he couldn't lose now. Where are my friends and my daughter, Nerta asked suddenly, surprising Kurnai. I order Anko to release them from the coffins, but they're being contained in a safe barrier since they're still under Orchimaru control and they still lack the will of their own, said Kurnai. A sound decision, said Kurnai, as she then bite her lip. What is it? I say this. Do you respect all of your feelings, but even if you're able to free them, they are still dead. You will have to allow them to return to the afterlife. And rest in peace, Kurnai said. She then stepped back in fear as he turned towards her with his Mongita Sharingan that spring to life. Kurnai, he said. Y yes, Emperor, she said, in a stuttering tone. Do you have a right to disappoint me to disagree? He asked furiously. He clenched his fists as he took a deep breath after seeing the fear in her eyes as he turned around. Everyone, being friend or family, they all go and leave me behind. Why don't they continue to live on for my sake? He yelled with pain and anger in his voice. Kurnai trembling stopped as she saw him slump back down on his bed. I won't let them go. I don't remember giving permission to the three of them to leave me alone once more. Each of them made me suffer all these years, taking a part of my heart and soul when they died. And in the end, you tell me they're going to leave me again? No, they won't, he said. Naruto, she said. No, not this time. For what reason did I obtain such power? Why the hell did I conquer the world? Just to let the people most important to me go away? I am Emperor Naruto, the ruler of this world. I will get what I want, even if death is my opponent. To satisfy the hole in my heart, I will obliterate the boundaries of life and death. You don't have that kind of power, Naruto Kurnai said. Neither do I think any person should have it. Neither you, she said. I will get it, then Naruto said. I have surpassed impossible odds so far, and I will do it again. I understand why you're saying I shouldn't, but you don't have any children of your own yet. Nor have you lost any of your best friends, that pain destroy you from the inside out. If not for Sasuke, Kakashi, or Gaara, you'd only be seen as shell right now. Kurnai nodded, everything he said was the truth. She couldn't understand the pain even if she wanted to. If not for those people being there for Naruto life though, she could already see him strain from the right path, turning into something that this world would fear up to this day even worse than what he is now. He would probably turn into a demon itself. You lost so much, the mere thought of losing more. Even your past loved ones, it terrifies you, she thought. It was Nerta flaw, wonders his enemies always use against him, and that made him suffer each time. If my friends and family aren't alive to live peaceful in the world that I have worked so hard to create, then all of this is nothing. It meant nothing. I might as just allow the resistance and the Akaski to do what the hell they want, he said. She stepped forward as she placed her hand on his shoulder, as she spoke in a gentle voice. 
Then we will find another way, she said. But does my wish and actions violate your morals at every level or the axe? As she stared into his eyes, I am sorry for lashing out at you like that. You know what I fear the most, Nerta said. Loneliness, she said, as he nodded. I can go up against anything, but I can't bear the loss of any of my loved ones. I understand. I'll do everything in my power to fulfill your wish. You have always cared about others, she said. It is right that we do the same for your feelings. I love you, Naruto. Even when we were on the opposite sides, even when we went our separate ways, even when you married, Haku. Despite the odds, you never gave up on me. You never stopped loving me. And I'll do the same thing for you, she said. Will you allow me to do that? She asked. He moved forward as he placed a passionate kiss on her lips. Thank you, he said, slowly breaking the kiss. Meanwhile, a deadly silence pervaded the room as a group of people stood around, the corpse of their army commander. As Kakashi could hardly believe the sight of Uchiha Sasuke sleeping lifelessly on the bed, his body was cold, eyes closed, face showing nothing. It was hard to believe that just a day ago this boy had led the Reich army into the enemy territory. Naruto may be the one who have ultimate control over the military forces, but Sasuke was the one who made this army, whipped the soldiers into shape, gave them the morale, gave them a reason to fight and push when he was there helping them on the battlefield as he showed them the strength and the power that he carried. As Kakashi thought to himself, what will I tell Naruto? It was a well known fact that Sasuke and Naruto were like brothers. The resistance may have lost Akagi and 25,000 soldiers, but Sasuke did alone have even a score. What happens now, Supreme Commander? asked Neji. Kakashi looked around and saw solemn looks on Shino, Gara, and Neji faces. Even Sigetsu stood in the corner, his eyes cold and lip still shut. Does anyone else know about this? asked Kakashi, as Gara shook his head. All the soldiers that came with us, they are loyal to me and sworn to keep this a secret until I say otherwise. They are the ones who's currently looking after Itachi Uchiha, said Gara. Even so, this is a tremendous loss for the Reich if the soldiers find out that your army commander is dead and the Kaiser is not present here, Shino said. Our force might collapse from fear and panic, said Kakashi. Yes, all of them said. Should we at least inform Sasuke fiancé, said Sigetsu, speaking for the first time, as all of them were giving my look to say no. Screw you guys and your secrecy, said Sigetsu as he turned to walk away. Sigetsu, Kakashi said. I won't tell anyone, yeah, yeah, said Sigetsu as he walked out and slammed the door behind him in a loud bang. I don't like this more than the rest of you, but until the Kaiser get here, we need to maintain order and discipline in the army. We are still at war and the resistance can attack us again, Kakashi said. You shouldn't have allowed them to take the bodies of their dead away, said Neji. That may be the practice of our resistance, not ours. Besides, in return, we also receive the bodies that fall. That led the raid with Sasuke, said Gara. In the meantime, what should we do about Itachi? We need the information which he has. I can get it out of him, Shino said. You will do no such thing, Kakashi said in a stern tone. Sasuke died to get this information to us. Itachi has already agreed to cooperate. Even fight for us once he's healed. I will not allow any of you to torture him for no reason. You may blame him for Sasuke's death, but also remember it was Sasuke's last wish to pardon his brother. That decision shall be taken by the Emperor, said Neche. Yes, but until he arrived here and made that decision, it is our duty to protect him until then said Gara, as Neji and Shino agreed, making Kakashi sign relief. I believe the Emperor is the best person to inform this sad news to Sanadi and Sakura, said Kakashi as the others nodded. He was going to be a father, Gara said, as a lone tear fall from his eye. As Gara turned to see all of them, looking at him in shock, as Kakashi clenched his fists, as Shino and Neji lowered their gazes, we won't let his sacrifice go in vain, Gara said. I will have him being missing for the time being missing in action. I'll take command of his army. Any objections, Gara asked, as no one said anything. As Kakashi stepped forward and gave a respective salute to Sasuke, and the others did as well. Time skip, it was now nighttime as a single man stood on the battlefield. As he was looking at a giant Uzu wall, as behind that was all of the right forces. Alarms then went off, so they have already spotted me, Naruto. Your army may have not been weak as I expected, he said. As he had on his orange mask, but this time it had two holes in it. As one of them show the Renegon and the other one show his deadly Mongeta Sharingan. As he was dressed in a black long sleeve with a coat that came up to his neck and black long cargo pants. He had on black gloves as well. 
as one of the spotlights shined on him. He went through Hansen. Summoning Jutsu, he said, as it was a poof. As a battle cry went off, this was something demonic, something large. The masked man smiled crudely as the ghetto statue broke free from its restraint. Another ear shattering scream sent powerful shockwave in all directions. Ghetto statue, charge, the man said. Standing on the wall was 200 of the SS guards, the strongest guard the Reich army has to offer. As they saw the monster, they didn't step away, they didn't back away, they looked at it head on, even though it was larger than all of the tailed beasts. As their newest commander stood in front of them, Gara, as he looked at the monster with his cold, uncaring eyes, while their previous army commander would have told him to charge such an enemy, Gara took a few seconds to look and analyze this critical monster. As he then spoke, man, your mission is to adopt a clear defense and formation a circle around this monster from all sides. Don't let it advance the wall no matter the cost, Gara said. Understood, commander. But what about the masked man? The SS captain asks, squad 4, 5 and 6 will engage him if he make a move to step into battle. Until then, he's to be left alone. He's certainly someone beyond our powers, Gara said. But another squad leader said, but he was silent when Gara gave a blank glare. Our only priority is stopping this monster from attacking the wall. Neither do we have the resources or time to go after this masked man. And if we fall, the rest of the soldiers are need to stop the monster. That is why I would personally lead all of you into battle, Gara said seriously. Commander? The man said as they were surprised. At that moment, Kakashi stepped beside him and another person. As Gara saw Snade Senju dressed in battle armor, the Senju mark shine proudly on her armor along with her right symbol as well. The SS members were in awe to see a member of the legendary Sanin step forward like this. I agree with Gara's strategy and I shall support him in this battle, said Snade seriously. Then I thank you for the support, said Gara. Snade didn't know where Sasuke was right now, but she would have to follow Gara straight into battle and she will not fail them. Supreme Commander Kakashi, I request that you fortify our defenses and prepare our forces for battle just in case, Gara suggested. It shall be done, Commander, but I hope it doesn't come to that, Kakashi said, getting nods from everyone. So do we, Kakashi, said Snavi. As Gara stepped forward, charge, he said. Meanwhile, Naruto awkwardly stood in the spot as three curious eyes just looked at him. Two of them were smiling while the last one looked curious and alert. Kurunai Gage was simply set on the small form of Ren. To think the ninja world was destroyed for the six-year-old girl, Kurunai thought. Even so, the girl looked like an identical copy of Naruto when he was younger. Ren Naruto said carefully as he took a step to the barrier, but she backed away. Kurunai broke on seeing the pain in Naruto's eyes as he was trying his best not to break down right there. You kill my rude comrades. You kill Donzo Sama. You destroy Konoha. Traitor, she said. I said Naruto as he didn't know what to say. He had imagined this his entire life, but now here he didn't know what to say to her. Ren, you were told lies. Naruto is your father, Sai said flatly. Shin was surprised to hear that as Ren fell to the ground. Lies. All lies, she shouted. Naruto stepped forward and his ninjas, holding the barrier, dropped it. The three of them moved to attack Naruto on an impulse. But Naruto Mangita Sharingan was active as he looked them in their eyes. Kurunai had seen many footage of Naruto casting his ultimate genjutsu on people and turned them into his forever comrades. But this was the first time she was seeing it in life. But something was different. He merely overrode the jutsu, controlling them and free them. He never ordered them to become his comrades or serve him. You're all traitors. Donzo Sama said I had no parents, Rain said, as she felt vulnerable seeing all these people surrounding her. She already saw how powerful these people were. She could never defeat Naruto and escape unless he allowed her to. And just how much time passed. She just went to sleep a few hours ago when he was killing the root comrades. He lied, Ren. You're my daughter, Naruto said. Then where's my mother? You say that you're my father, so where's my mother? As Naruto's shoulders slumped down when she said that, as he didn't know what to say at that moment. You're always lying, Captain Naruto. You liar. I'm your mother. Time slowed down. As Naruto turned to see Kurunai walk past him, as she went and embraced the girls in her arm. As Naruto saw all the hatred replaced in Ren's eyes, it was no show in shock and also a thin chance of happiness. Unknowingly, she wrapped one of her little arms around Kurunai's back. As Naruto then got hit, the realization family, that was what all young child wanted. 
he had craved it so bad back then if Kakashi wasn't there for him. However, could he really place such a burden on Kurnai? This wasn't a one-time favor, this was a lifetime thing. As he looked at her with tension, but Kurna gave him a small smile and that was the end of it. As Kurna breathed the hug with Ren, what I Ren said as she didn't know what to say. Then why she asked, why, why did you leave me she said. As Kurna flinched a little, the villagers of Konoha were quite biased against her father. They hated him for something which he had no power over. Even so we loved each other, since I am much more old than him, our relationship was frowned upon. When you were born to us, the doctors told us that you were dead. Naruto was quite young at that time and he was quite heartbroken and I was not allowed to see your body. But the truth was, you were taken from us. But Danzo Sama, but Kurna shook her head. Shimura Danzo was a traitor who tried to start a civil war in the village. He brainwashed her rude comrades to participate in his evil plans. And he tried to do the same thing to you and your evil father. Naruto tried very hard to save his comrades. But Donzo has gone through very length to turn them into his slave. In order to save the village of Hokage himself, gave Naruto the order to stop Root. What? Rin said in shock. I can give you the proof if you want to see it with your own eyes. You should believe me since I was a Hokage, the fifth Hokage of Konoha, Kurenai said. You were the fifth, Rin said. As Kurenai smiled, I was. It was true that he killed everyone but it was his mission. He killed his friends, comrades, superiors and even his leader. But he couldn't bring himself to kill you, said Kurenai. Me? said Ren. Now that she thought about it, Naruto toyed with her the entire time. Even when she tried to kill him, he merely defended himself and not harm her even once. Despite the orders, he couldn't kill you because you were his daughter. My daughter, she said. As her eyes flickered towards Naruto, he saw something but it was then quickly gone. I can't trust him yet, she said. Kurenai's heart fell for Naruto as he was trying to keep himself neutral and not to break down because this was hurting him a lot. Then trust her. I mean you no harm Ren. Whatever proof you need will be provided by Kurenai, said Naruto. As Naruto started to walk towards the exit followed by Shin and Sai, Captain Naruto, he paused and turned around. As he was surprised as she gave him a small bow. Thank you for freeing me. I'll always be there for you Ren, even if you hate me, said. As he gave a small smile and left the room. But guys be any steps right here. If you want to make part of this or know what to do, like, subscribe, comment down below and turn on the bell notifications they posted. Remember share to all of your friends in your social media platform. But I'm off for now guys. See you guys soon. Well, tomorrow. Peace.